Well, how you all doing? I am so glad to have this opportunity to be able to be with you again today. And as you know, we've been studying this matter that I believe is probably one of the most important things that a Christian can ever do. And that is to have the knowledge of as to why the Lord gave to us his Holy Spirit to indwell us. And remember the verse that we've used already, but as many as are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. I somehow feel that most of us are not being led by the Spirit like we ought to be. In fact, I believe that we're hindering the Spirit from leading us. I'm going to give you some of my observations as to why I believe that. And then I'm going to get into the message. We're going to talk about the, the seal whereby you're sealed by the Holy Spirit. In just a moment, but listen to this. I believe because Christians today are ignoring the Holy Spirit. Remember what the title of my whole series has been. We're either ignorant or ignoring the Holy Spirit. Let me give you a few observations as to why I believe that most Christians are maybe not ignorant of the Holy Spirit, but are ignoring the Holy Spirit. Here's the paradox of our time. Right here now as we live in this historical time. And that is, we are spending more, but we have less. I'm talking about we're spending more in time, we're spending more in money, we're spending more in activities, but we're having less. We're having less time, we're having less money, and we're having the less of the, of the best of activities. And I believe because we're ignoring the Holy Spirit, we have more conveniences today, but we have less time. The Holy Spirit wants to lead us into using our time better. But we have all these different conveniences. I'm talking about from everything from automobiles to all of the appliances in our houses and all of the things that we've given as far as technology is concerned. We have more conveniences. But we have less time. Less time to pray. Less time to read our Bibles. Less time to... Uh, go soul winning and witnessing, less time to attend church and all. It's good. And here we have all these conveniences, but we seem to have less time for God. Here's something else to think about. I believe this, even in the political world, but even more so in the spiritual world. And that's this. We have more knowledge, but we really have less sense. Common sense spiritual sense we have knowledge because we gain it from all of the different uh, social medias and uh, book readings and all of the things that come our way we have knowledge but we do not have the sense to use the knowledge that we have and that takes the spirit of god to give us that sense and we're not allowing him to do it because we're not acknowledging him like we ought to. Did you know, it seems to me like today, even in the spiritual world that we have, and I know, even in the secular world, but we have more experts. Yeah. And we have more specialists, even on our health. Experts and specialists, you read about them, hear about them, they tell you about them. If you go to the doctor or the hospital or some clinic or something, uh, they've got, we got the experts and we got the specialists medically. <laughs> but we have less health. Why? Why? Because I believe God's people are not acknowledgeable or recognizing what the Holy Spirit can do even for our health. And I'm very conscious of that. I'm 81 years old and I want to be healthy so I can finish my call that God has for me in the best health possible. And I realize that at the age 
that I am and the age that's uh, coming upon me, I'm going to have some failing in health, but I, I want to have better health so I can serve him better. And here we have all these experts and specialists and we read about everything that's supposed to be making us healthy. But the Bible says, is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them anoint him with oil. And of course, oil, speaking of the Holy Spirit, as we're going to learn in these series, let him anoint him with oil and the prayer of faith shall save the sick. So the Holy Spirit has to have something to do even with our health. I believe this. I believe we spend too recklessly the money God allows us to have. I believe we laugh too little. We, we don't have enough joy and happiness to cause us to have the good spirit of laughing. I believe we read well too seldom. The Bible says give attendance to reading. Well, we're not reading like we ought to. In fact, we're looking at a screen, whether it be our cell phones or iPads or iPods or television or computer, whatever. But we read very seldom and we watch TV way too much. And we certainly do the inter internet way too much because it's usually going to bombard us. I mean, that Facebook stuff and Twitter and all of the different things. I'm not going to go into all that, but I'm telling you, we're not allowing the Holy Spirit to be able to use us like he wants to. And this is just my observation. I think we have multiplied our possessions, but tragically reduced our values, our spiritual values. Have you ever seen our world in the condition that it's in right now? And I may predict to you, because I've read the last chapter of the book more than once, and this is a time when we have allowed the time to come upon us where this world is in perilous times. God told us it would be. I'm simply saying now, we have honestly come to a place where if we don't allow the Holy Spirit to have control of us, we're going to be in sincere and dire trouble, even more so. How can we raise families, good children? How can we have a good marriage? How can we support our husbands and our wives with the love and the compassion and the help and the need that they need in this dangerous, wicked world if we don't allow the only person of the Godhead on this earth, the Holy Spirit, to lead us? Folks, listen. The truth is we have learned how to make a living, but we have not learned how to make a life. And the way to make a life is very simple. It's to let the Holy Spirit have his way in our life. I hope you're listening, and I hope you're uh, honestly paying attention to what I'm trying to tell you, because I want to talk to you about the Holy Spirit again. And what we've learned so far is that Christians are either ignorant or they're ignoring the Holy Spirit. And I think sometimes we just got to come to the realization we're not ignorant. We know the things. Well, I've just already said right now. I think we know them. We're not ignorant of them. We just ignore them. And if there's ever been a day that we don't need to ignore the Holy Spirit's leading, it's this day in which we're living in right now. God knows that's true. Now, hold it. I'm telling you, I've talked to you about the testimony that I've had of being uh, first filled with the Holy Spirit. I've talked about the results of being filled with the Holy Spirit and what God's done for me. And if you haven't listened to those yet, go back and listen to them. They're on this YouTube channel and you can go back and listen to them. And I, I suggest you do that. And we've talked about what the inspiration, the word inspiration means and how we can uh, learn how the Spirit of God is even in this matter of the in-spirit action, inspiration and so forth, and, and we've gone through that. And uh, I, I've talked to you about the Holy Spirit being compared to wind. And I've got a message up now coming up this week. It's gonna be the Holy Spirit compared to fire. And I also wanna to give to you this message today and the message I wanna give you today is simply one that I think needs to be absolutely, totally and completely listened to. 
because I'm going to have you turn with me, if you will, to the book of Ephesians and chapter 1 and verse number 13. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse number 13. The seal of the Holy Spirit, I'm talking about the seal of the Holy Spirit and how it's going to speak to us both in security and the seal as an image. Look what it says in Ephesians chapter 1, verse number 13. And here's what it says. After that you believed, ye were sealed. Have you believed? If you have. After that you believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. You and I were sealed. What does it mean to be sealed by the Holy Spirit? I'm going to tell you. I'm going to give you a truth here. I believe that will probably bless your heart. We have been sealed by the Holy Spirit. And then later on in that book of Ephesians, the Lord says in chapter uh, uh, 4 and verse number 30, he said, Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Wow. Sealed. We need the knowledge that God is trying to portray to us about this matter of being sealed by the Holy Spirit. Now I want you to know something and I want you to listen carefully. That word sealed carries with it two great truths that the Holy Spirit has done for us. First of all, after that you believed, you were sealed by the Holy Spirit. I believe that's the seal of security. I can't lose my salvation because the Holy Spirit came into me and God sealed him in me and I am protected unto the day of redemption. <clears throat> and, and that's the thing that we need to realize that will give us that eternal security, which will give us that joy, which will give us the, the motivation to serve him. I'm secure based on the sealing of the Holy Spirit in me. Here. Is this not true that you'll take maybe a bill will arrive in your mail and you'll open that bill and you'll write out a check to pay that bill. And usually the bills that we receive in the mail come with an envelope all ready to send back to them with a payment. So here's what we do. We get out our checkbook and we write out the amount of the bill that's due. What I do is I write that check out for the very amount of the bill. I put it in that envelope. <coughs> Excuse me. I put it in that envelope that they sent to me to send my payment with. Watch it now. Then I'll take a gospel track. Always. And I'll put in with my check that gospel track. So the copy of the bill that's due, the check, and the gospel track, I put in the envelope. Then I take it and I'll lick the seal. I'll seal it, put a stamp on it, and I'm going to believe and trust because I sealed it, have the address as to where it's going to go, put it in the mail, and it goes through the mail to the place that I send it. It arrives safely with the contents in the envelope that have been sealed secure. They arrive there safe. They arrive to the destination safely. And that's exactly what God is trying to tell us that the Holy Spirit does. For our security, he comes into our lives and God seals us and the address of our destination is heaven and we are sealed unto the day that we arrive in heaven. What a blessed truth the Holy Spirit is that he seals us.
unto the day of redemption. Just as much as my check and that track and that bill arrives securely. I, who have the Holy Spirit in my soul, is going to arrive in heaven securely. That's what a seal does. The seal secures my destination. The Holy Spirit seals my destination. Now, in Jeremiah, here's another thought I want you to understand. In Jeremiah chapter 39, verses 9 and 10, we read these words, and he says, I subscribed the evidence and sealed it and took witness. Wow. So the seal has another meaning. First of all, the seal gives forth an evidence. Yeah, that I've been, that the seal comes. And it also is a witness. So I have the evidence as a witness that I've been sealed. And now they use it as a king in the Old Testament and even in the New Testament because the Lord Jesus used it as an illustration in Luke chapter number 15 about the prodigal son, which I'll talk to you here in just a minute. But that word seal in the Old Testament, there was a king or the kings had what they called a ring. And that ring could be placed in maybe clay that's soft. And it would leave the image of that seal showing that the king has approved whatever it is. Or they could take it and put it in some kind of a substance like ink. They could put that, that ring there and then transfer it over to a document and put that ink seal on the document. And it proves with that image that the king has sealed it because only the king has that seal. Only the king has the seal. And he puts his image on that which he approves. You can read that in so many scriptures in the Old Testament. I mean, you will be amazed how many times God has given to us that the king's seal leaves the images on the documents that he approves. The king's seal. Now, what is the king's seal to the Christian? The king's seal is the Holy Spirit. And what does the Holy Spirit do? He leaves his image of the king's approval. Huh? I don't know about you, but that just does something for me. That the Lord not only gave me the security through the seal, but the Lord gave me his image of approval by his seal. Now, folks, are you listening to me? Do you understand when the Bible says there in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13, that we were sealed, that we were sealed until the day of redemption? And grieve not the Holy Spirit that is within you, that you were sealed by? Huh? We are sealed, and we have the image of God's, the king's approval. We have his image. Now, let me say something to you. Now, listen carefully, because I just did a Bible study on these. I just, in fact, let me just show you. I wrote all of these things down that I want to tell you that I studied and learned both of a secular seal and of a spiritual seal but I'm talking mainly and primarily of the spiritual seal. I don't want you to be ignorant of the Holy Spirit. I want you to know, I don't want you to ignore the Holy Spirit. So here's what I've learned. One, a seal signifies a finished transaction. <laughs> a seal today, even in the courts of our land, like a legal document stamped with some official seal, signifies completion. And you can find this in Jeremiah 32 as well. But listen, for example, everybody's familiar with a notary public. All right, what you do is you have a notary public and you have a, a document that needs to be 
documented of authority and 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 and, and give the, it's the assurance of its legality. The Middle Republic has a seal and presses it upon that document, and it leaves the seal pressed upon that document that this is signified to be completed. For example, when I when I was pastoring, I would had I had marriages, and people would bring their marriage license to me after when I would perform the marriages. And after I performed the marriage, I had a marriage license seal. And I would stamp that marriage license with that seal to give it the approval of the document that's going to be mailed in to record that marriage license. But it was sealed with a seal. It stamped the image of the person who is legitimate to seal it. So... A seal signifies a finished transaction. Well, if the Holy Spirit <laughs> was given to me at the time that I believed that I have been sealed, that signifies it's a finished transaction. God's salvation to me is a finished transaction. It's God's legal document to me that I am on my way to heaven because he has sealed me with his image of the seal. And like I said, seal also means security and it's a protection. For example, if you want to read something interesting, go to Matthew chapter 27. And when they were concerned about the death of Christ and they were placing him in the tomb, what is it that they required that he, wasn't, that he wouldn't be stolen from the tomb and just be lied that he re, uh, re, uh, was raised again? The truth of the matter is, if you read in Matthew chapter 27, they rolled the stone in front of the tomb's mouth and sealed it to give us security. So it's not only signifying a finished transaction. To be sealed is also meaning that you're secure and protected. That's what the Holy Spirit's doing for you and me. Do you understand how important it is? For the only person of the Trinity that's on this earth right now is the Holy Spirit. And guess where he lives? If you're a Christian, he lives in you. Something else that seal means. That seal uh, means auth authenticity. In other words, it authenticates its contents as being genuine and as being real. It authenticates its contents. In other words, I am genuine and I am real as a Christian because I have the seal of the Holy Spirit in me. Glory to God. You know what? I really think I could shout a little bit right now, knowing the Holy Spirit and his work in me. Praise the Lord. And you know, a keen seal in the Old Testament was valued. I mean, if you can want to see it, look at Daniel chapter 6, verse number 17, Jeremiah 22, verse number 24, and even a seal that was valued. For example, the ring of the keen had the seal and it was valued. That's why when you read about Jesus giving the story of the prodigal son, what did he do? He gave him a ring. Did he not? He gave him a ring. He gave him a robe. He gave him a feast and so forth. But why did the, why did the Lord use that the father gave his prodigal son a ring? Because that ring authenticated the seal that you're my son. My goodness, how the scripture reveals to us these great truths. Here's something else. A seal makes an impression in the object. For example, if you take, if you take uh, wax and you place that ring on that wax, it'll leave the impression of the ring in the wax. If you push it in soft clay, it'll leave the impression of the ring in the clay and so forth. But like itself, it leaves its image. Let me let me read you something here. I gotta read this to you. Listen to this. I think you're gonna enjoy this. 
it leaves this image. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, if you want to but listen to what it says. But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass, that's a mirror, the glory of the Lord, and are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. What does the Holy Spirit do? It gives us the image of our Father. Oh my goodness, ladies and gentlemen. I have the image in my life of the Father who gave to me his seal by sending me Jesus' spirit to live in me. That's in your Bible. How important then is the Holy Spirit to us? My goodness. And some of us just take Christianity so lightly. And God has done such a miraculous and marvelous and, and tremendous work in us. And grieve not the Holy Spirit, whereby ye are sealed of the day of redemption. Go to Job 38, 14 sometime and read that too about the image of God that he has given to us by that seal. So here's something else. What can a seal be? A seal can be sometimes by wicked people counterfeited. They counterfeit money. They counterfeit documents. They counterfeit preachers. But if I am sealed of the seal of the Holy Spirit, I cannot be counterfeited. You know why? Because my seal is a seal of holiness. I have been made holy by the Holy Spirit. That's my seal. I cannot look at things I ought not to look. I cannot think of things I ought not to think. I cannot do the things I ought not, not, not to do because I have been sealed by his holiness. I have the image of his holiness. Does that mean that I'm perfect? Absolutely not. But it means that the Holy Spirit who is sealed inside me is able to lead me on a daily activity of holiness. Thank God. Thank God. Listen, folks. Don't be ignorant. And for sure, do not ignore the working and the purpose of the Holy Spirit. God bless you, my friend. I'm going to bring to you another message here probably in the next day or two that I've been studying on how the Holy Spirit represents a dove. Why a dove? We're going to see. I want you to get these truths, but today I have given to you a truth that is absolutely sometimes ignored and unlearned by most Christians, and that's the truth that you have been sealed, given security, and you have been sealed by having the image of the King in your life. God help us today to live by that one, the Holy Spirit, who is sealed within us to give us the image of the Father. Dear Lord, thank you for these dear friends who right now are listening to this particular message. And I pray, Father, if it be thy perfect will, and I know it is, that you would take what's been said and bless somebody today with this truth and help them to have your image and to rejoice over your security. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, folks. We'll see you next time.